Shall we start with heavyweight, shall we? Well, where else are we going to start? I mean, as he walked out, the king, the champ is here, the champ is back, the GOAT is here, the GOAT has arrived. I mean, that was unbelievable, right? We all know John Jones is great. We all knew the wrestling was a threat. We knew the kickboxing was a threat as well of Cyril Garn. I thought Jones would win. I did not think he would be that dominant and that quick. You know what I mean? Right from the opening belt, I said I thought he was going to be elusive. He wasn't elusive. He walked him down, full of confidence in his own ability. Got the takedown. Cyril impressed me for a moment. Managed to stop it. But, you know, he persevered. He got the takedown. And then Cyril made a mistake. Made a mistake. Exposed his neck, trying to get back to his feet. Mm. And John Jones, he made it look easy. He made Cyril Garn look like an amateur. And I hesitate to say that because I like him. And he's such a, he is a talented fighter. But this is how good John Jones is. He made him look like an amateur, Nick. Yeah, listen, Cyril Garn's the number one contender in the world for a reason. You know, that was a, it seemed weird watching the number one contender walk to the octagon first for a guy that's been inactive for three years and never even competed in this weight division. But the reason they did that, because he's a superstar. John yeah. Jones is the greatest of all time. And he proved once again tonight that he, does, he is fully deserving of that status. He was phenomenal from start to finish. Yes, of course, he looked a little bit slower than usual on the feet and he even said he did. in his post-fight interview, he said, I felt, didn't feel quite right on my feet. Goofy, I think he goofy said. Goofy was the exact <laughs> word. Yeah, felt a bit goofy on the feet. But I'll tell you what, as soon as he got on the mat, he was he was right at home. Listen, I want to, let's finish on the positive in a minute with Jones. Talk to me about Cyril. Is there any disappointment from, from the way that he obviously participated in this fight? Okay, let me apologize because I said he looked like an amateur. That is very, very insulting. But I'm saying Jones just walked through him. He made yeah. it easy. There was no there was no adversity. There was, there was nothing. Cyril didn't get anything done. And I, and I don't like to say that because if you spend time with Cyril Garn, he's one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. Yeah. Truly is a gentle giant, great sense of humor, and a very formidable fighter. But he... <laughs> He didn't do anything tonight. And that just shows how good he is. Mm. Now, he made mistakes. When you're getting back to your feet, right, there's a fence. You want to lean against the fence and you have to keep your back against the cage at all costs, right? And it's harder to do that. The natural instinct when you're trying to get back to your feet is to get on all fours and yeah. climb up. You can't do that in a fight because your neck will be exposed and you will get choked out. And that's what he did. He leaned forward to get up against John Jones, a man that has done that many times. Yeah. You know, look what he did to Loyoto Mashida. You know, and the way he dropped him, the way he sank him. He's a dangerous man on all levels of mixed martial arts. And Cyril, I don't know if he didn't respect him. I just think his lack of experience showed tonight. Mm. 12 fights, that's all. And I yeah. think that's what showed. Yeah, absolutely. I think coming out in this arena, the response John Jones got, I think the reality of who was standing across the octagon from him maybe sunk him for a second because John went on the front foot and Cyril seemed happy to be on the back foot. But then you were thinking, you just, the closer you get to the fence, the more opportunity John's going to get to blast the double leg, to take you down, to take you to where he wanted it to be. Ironically, it was Cyril trying to throw some offense. He threw, threw a big wide left hook and John just slipped straight underneath it and that was the only invitation he needed. Of course, you know, you come away and it, it lasted seconds, not even minutes, never mind rounds. So, of course, you come away a little bit disappointed and there's going to be nobody in the whole of Las Vegas more disappointed than Cyril Gann mm. because he landed nothing whatsoever in the fighting for the vacant heavyweight championship of the world. That's going to hurt. Of course it is. But it's just about levels. I, there's levels to this game. I said Cyril Gann might knock John Jones out. That might be a reality that we get to see tonight. Mm. We didn't see that. We didn't see Cyril land a single shot. And I'm not criticising Cyril Gann. I'm... Bigging up, so to speak, John Jones. Yeah. That's how good this man is. It's not because Cyril Garn isn't good. It's because John Jones is just that many levels above everybody else. But there's an obvious deficiency. So therefore, now going forward sure. for Cyril, we know exactly what he's got to work. And I think a lot of people would have had that anywhere going into the fight. Yeah. But it's even more evident off the back of a dominant display from John Jones. I said, let's end, let's end on the, the positive. Because it is a positive, that level that John Jones showed tonight. Cyril Garn's the number one contender in the heavyweight division. Jones has just walked back and absolutely smoked him. Yeah, smoked him. Made it look easy. No adversity. Didn't take a single shot. Hasn't got a mark on his face, right? You get paid danger money for stepping in there. There was no danger. There was nothing. Um, John Jones is the greatest of all time, right? That's a fight. 
Joe Rogan even said that on the microphone. Yeah. Cyril Garn needs to go and work on his wrestling like his life depends on it. He's yeah. only had 12 fights. I think that show tonight, yeah. it's not a Thai boxing fight. It's not. Wrestling is such a key component of mixed martial arts, jiu-jitsu, grappling, sambo, whatever you want to call it. You have to have that stuff nailed. You have to give that kind of style its respect. Right. That all said and done. Is he going to do that to the whole division, John Jones? No, nope. no, but he doesn't need to because he went in there with a guy with a glaring hole in his game and he exposed it. And it was his first fight in three years. Mm. And it was his debut up a heavyweight. Mm. John will be far more comfortable the more he competes. You know, that was a great day that he kind of indicated, you know what, International Fight Week, July, Stipe Miocic, sounds good for me. We could get three fights out of John Jones this, this year, which is absolutely incredible. But he wouldn't be able to do that to Stipe. Stipe wouldn't make no. the, the fundamental mistakes that Cyril Gann made. He won't let him Never self taken years. down. There's just no way. Never in a no million way. years. But then the other way to look at it is John Jones would probably be a lot more creative on the feet than Stipe. Stipe, don't get me wrong, mm. he can pang on the feet. It's a different type of fight. But again, Stipe's at a certain point in his career. Is he, is he past his best now? Is he a little bit past his sell-by date? I don't know. But listen, you see a performance like that from John Jones, you think, who can possibly stop him now? Who can stop him from just completely obliterating the heavyweight rankings as it stands, just like he did light heavyweights a decade ago? Stipe Miocci, that is the guy who may be able to stop him. Look, Styles may fight. In some ways, you could kind of compare Cyril Garn's style to Derrick Lewis. Of course, he's far more technical and he's more brilliant on the feet and he's faster and he's more technical, okay? But he's a striker only. Yeah. Look at what DC did to Derrick Lewis. Went out there, took him down, choked him out, yeah. right? Because that's what a wrestler like that does. Look at DC versus Stipe Miocic. Mm. Now, I'm not doing MMA math because no, we know no. that doesn't stack up, but you can definitely look at these matchups and kind of get an idea of how the fight with John Jones is going to go, yeah. right? Jones and DC were very competitive. Yes, he lost the second one by a head kick. First one was very close, but even until he got caught by that head kick, DC was doing really well. Yeah. It was a very competitive fight. And look at the trilogy between DC and Stipe Miocic. He has the wrestling, he has the size, he has the gas tank, he has the confidence, he has the boxing, He's defended the heavyweight belt more times than anybody else, and that's for a reason. So, International Fight Week, whenever this fight happens, <laughs> it's a, an amazing fight. I think there's a reason why Cyril Gann got that fight tonight and John Jones jumped at that fight, this opportunity tonight. I think if it would have been Stipe, and there's a strong argument that it probably should have been Stipe rather than Cyril Gann, him being the most successful heavyweight the UFC has ever seen. But I think that's a different type of fight for John Jones. When you look at it now, you think, you know what? The perfect way to come back. A guy that he knows that he can completely exploit mm. in one certain area. You're right, yeah, the Stipe fight yeah. is way more competitive. To come back into that after a three-year hiatus would have been really, really dangerous. The only danger here was standing in front of Cyril Gann and letting him land. Exactly what John Jones himself said. You zig instead of zagging and you get caught. That can happen in a kickboxing match. But in a wrestling match, it was a man against a boy. Come back, get your mojo back, get rid of that ring rust or whatever you want to call it, even if that exists, which it kind of doesn't, depends on the individual. Get used to the crowd, yeah. get used to the nerves, get used to all of that stuff with a guy that stylistically is tailor-made for you mm, yeah. in some ways. And again, it's easy to say that now because of the result. Of course, of course. And we all under that. Oh, you don't know, maybe Cyril knocks him out. Well, yeah. Steve Bay's a different kettle of fish. And yeah. I think the nerves against Steve Bay Miochi would have been a lot more real yeah. and would have affected him more than what Cyril did. And again, Cyril, if you see this, love you, brother, big fan of you. And he'll be back. But we're telling the truth. And he'll be back. You know, like you said, there's there's something for, for Cyril to be working on, obviously, in the in the upcoming months before he, before he gets back into yep. uh, the octagon. Just He's got to go to Bulgaria. He's got to go to Russia. Of course. There's yeah. lots of, of wrestling places in Europe where he can go, focus on that, because it, he has to round it out. The Jones performance, though, when you... Let's say we haven't just seen that and we're still previewing it. The Jones performance defies all logic. The three-year layoff, people just don't do that, do they? You don't have that length of time out of the octagon and then come back and deliver a performance like that. I think spe especially built on the fact that his last three fights... Of course, were flat. ...all went the distance. They were yeah. flat performances. Um, questionable whether he even won one or two of those fights as well, as I still, still debate rages today. But he's put... Yeah. Silenced everything <sighs> now. As he. And 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 he, and he did look like he was going stale at light heavyweight. And I think that kind of performance tonight makes you think, yeah, you were going stale because John Jones, who's fully mot motivated, and John Jones with the fear factor. And believe me, he had the fear factor there. He didn't want Cyril Gant to land a shot. And you can see that in there. As soon as he had the opportunity, took him down. The old John Jones would play with his food. 
There was no playing with the food tonight. It was, I'm getting this guy out of there as quickly as humanly possible. I want the belt back. I want to be, be a king again. Well, yeah, because as we know, Jones sometimes, you know, take everything he says with a pinch of salt. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Sometimes he doesn't necessarily mean what he says. And he says they're all the right things on the microphone. But when he talks about the fear of light heavyweight in those last three fights, that sounded like a perfect excuse yeah. for why the performances were kind of lackluster. But he had the fear in this training camp because there's a lot of pressure coming back. And he kind of proved his point. When he has got the fear, when yeah. he has got the pressure, when he has got to prove something to the whole world, yeah. that's the Jones version that you see. And as well as that, something that you picked up on, yeah, we know how good he is as a martial artist. He's got star power as well, hasn't he? I mean, oh, yeah. the whole arena were on their feet. Well, it wasn't, yeah, not just that. I mean, of course, it's all John week. Jones. Yeah, yeah. All, all week, they loved him. But I just thought he knows how to milk a crowd. He knows how to milk yeah. a moment. When he walked out, all right, they were messing with his toe bandages yeah, or yeah, whatever yeah. they were doing for a while. But, you know, that just adds to the anticipation. And then after he won, you know, he went around to all the different sides of the octagon <laughs> and he didn't jump on the cage like everyone else because he's so damn tall. He just leaned he over, over and he's waving at everyone and he's giving everyone a <laughs> smile, you know, giving them all a hug. We had John Jones, his father, two brothers and his fiance sat right next to us. And the reaction, it was so beautiful to see. Mm. You know what I mean? Listen, there's been ups and downs along the way. We know that. But, you know, the support clearly is there. I mean, there is family, of course. And just to witness that was so special. And to see John come over and the all made eye contact and the smile on his face. But yeah, yeah, the star power. It's real, man. Activity's key though now, isn't it? You just brought yeah. that up. International Fight Week's already just been mentioned. He's been on the microphone. He said what he needs to say. Steve Pair then. And like you have alluded to, Maybe another one before the end of the year. Keep keep that ball rolling. I think if he fights Stipe in, in July, I, I think most definitely there would be a return at the end of the year. Of course, it's the 30th anniversary show sometime in November as well. The, the, the two anniversary date. I think John Jones could potentially jump into that date as well because we know UFC will have something magical planned for that. So, so yeah, three fights this year would kind of make up for the fact that we've had no fights from him in the last three years. And I think, you know, obviously a lot depends on the performance against Stipe. Of course. But that could be the start of a brand new trilogy for him, you know? Because Stipe, what he's done previously, stands above everybody else in this division yep. prior to John Jones' arrival. But moving into 2024, loads of great prospects to come through. Yeah, but does he fight in 2024? Because if he has three fights this year, I can see a world where John Jones comes, wins tonight, wins in uh, summer, gets one in for the 30th anniversary. Says, three fights at heavyweight. Says, oh, by the way, everyone, told you I was the GOAT. Yeah. I did it, came, <laughs> I saw, I conquered. I kicked some ass. <laughs> Sorry, BT. Um, and says, you know what? There you go. I'm, I'm done. I bet, listen, I bet you if you asked him that now, though, he'd be like, no chance, because he's just got the ultimate shot of adrenaline there. Mm. An entire arena singing his name for the first time in three <sighs> years, lifting the belt above his head, his second weight division belt. Right now, John Jones is thinking, I want yeah. to fight forever. I want to do this forever. Because that feeling, look at this arena. It's yeah. epic. Right? And the show that the UFC put on, the whole production, the package, it is unbelievable. We were even saying, Jake Gyllenhaal walking out, Rebecca, my wife over there, said, this is probably the best thing he's ever done in his life. <laughs> yeah, like, probably, when you're on a yeah. movie set, believe it or not, it's very boring. You're sitting around, you're waiting around. It sounds glamorous. It's boring, Okay. <laughs> He walked out there and he got to be a real life UFC fighter for five minutes. It was unbelievable. <laughs> that is hard to walk yeah. away from. So, yeah, and people said, Do you miss it? I'm like, Nah, not really. Tonight, a blooming miss it. I'm like, I'm like Look at that. Can you tell? Look at it. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. It was. Listen, John Jones is back. He's the heavyweight champion of the world. Fingers crossed we'll get to see him again this year. International Fight Week has alluded to against Stipe Mayorcic. Shall we hear from him? Why not? He's got some shiny gold wrapped around his waist. And he's with Caroline Pierce. You've been so happy all week and the elation when, you, when your hand was raised and the belt was wrapped around your waist. How does this win compare to some of the other huge wins of your career, given everything you've gone through? Uh, you know, I've never enjoyed being out there as much as I enjoy it now. Um, there's, a, there's a confidence, there's a peace that I carry with me today uh, that makes everything I do a lot easier. Um, I was just in the moment. I was just in the moment. I had fun with the fans afterwards. Um, I felt calm and I felt happy out there. And uh, it, it was just awesome. Everything was awesome. It worked out perfectly. I was able to do what I said I was going to do, which was not just win the fight, but dominate. And uh, very exciting. 
there was a chance that Stipe would have been your first heavyweight opponent. Um, so have you allowed yourself or did you allow yourself to sort of start studying him and think about how you might fight Stipe? Yes, I'm already prepared for Stipe Miocic. We, we actually did a full training camp uh, for Stipe Miocic um, already and the fight didn't uh, transpire. And um, we're just going to pull out our own notes. We're going to refine these notes. We're going to get right back to studying and, and Everything I do will be about Stipe Miocic. I believe that I'm going to not only win this fight against Stipe, but I'm going to finish Stipe Miocic. I don't know if it's going to be a first round, second round, but uh, my, my, my hopes is before the championship rounds. I have zero doubt that I'll beat Stipe Miocic.